I would be doing my spirit a great disservice if I did not make this video. So here I am. I have never like really wanted to be here and my life is kind of pointless and unnecessary. Um, I was born because my parents who are the kind of people who shouldn't have even been allowed into the country of Canada met and had a lustful, fleeting, low energy, traumatic and abusive connection from which I was born. Now they were superstitious, you know, my mother, quote unquote, I, I call them mother and father, quote unquote. Um, you know, my father was trying to tell her to do the thing that men love women to do to their bodies after men have impregnated them so that men have no responsibility and women can bear the brunt of the trauma that these acts take upon their body and their spirit, right? You don't just go in and get a shmush motion and then just walk away like, whoo, cool, all done. Hey, <laughs> no problem. Now I have known, like, I was shocked about this out. There are women who use that as birth control like normal university educated beautiful women who seem like they have it together like i was really surprised so whatever but like um you know my quote-unquote mother was superstitious enough not to want to be saddled with caying or causing situations that are not conducive to life a baby and by the way I'm using this language because of censorship which we all know is rife and unavoidable in this world so she was superstitious enough not to do that she thought that was wrong you know but the premarital sex well unfortunately for me they were not superstitious enough to avoid that and so I got born now my mother was the last of ten she first tried to, again, cause conditions that would bring about the termination of her own life when she was 14 years old, which should be a severe red flag. Um, pictures of her as a child, she just looked miserable. Um, she ended up attaching to boys and boyfriends very early and her parents like wrenched her away from them. Um, meanwhile, she was the last of 10, so like, she didn't get any attention, she didn't get any care. She said sometimes that people wouldn't even bother to see if she had food or whatever. And she had one brother who would like bring her food because nobody, I don't know how that worked. Um, so yeah, and then this mentally ill person. And you know what, I think there's something to be said um, about the strength of a person's gene health when they're like the last of a great number. Like it's kind of like when you're photocopying something and you photocopy, then they're making a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. And then like by the time you get to like the 10th copy, it's like kind of crappy. I feel like there's something to that with genes. If anyone has any science on this, please let me know. I've tried to look for it. I don't know what it's called. I don't know the scientific terms for it, but I've just seen that like the last of 10 or like the last of 12 or the last of 13 is like a runt or like severely mentally ill or they've got like some crazy genetic and health problems, whatever. Unfortunately, when you're the last of that amount, you've usually got a parent who's just completely cut off from any experience of what their child may potentially face in this life. They literally don't give a K. You know, they just like doing it and they're finding some excuse to justify their actions, whether it's the Bible says bear fruit and be plentiful, right? They don't copy everything in the Bible that the Bible tells them to do. Oh no, they just pick and choose the ones that they like, right? Like go and have a lot of sex and bring a lot of children, right? That's what they like, right? So they decide, oh, this, this is what they're not, they're still mixing fabrics, right? You know, there's still, you know, there's a, a man who got told to sacrifice and kill your child on a slab. You know, they're not doing that. They just pick and choose the ones that they like.
and those ones tend to involve sex and you know men dominating women and all other whatever nonsense they see that's what they want to do right anyway um so yeah you know i have had a really like i don't really know what to tell you my life has been extremely painful difficult challenging um horrible like <laughs> just absolutely horrible you know being mixed race having no culture being raised a minority in a in a in a country with no culture be like just you know and it's like i have so many good things about my life i really really do but when it comes down to it it's just like celebrating pizza night in jail <laughs> okay if 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 i told you hey guess what in jail every last friday of the month it's pizza night and it's so awesome you know and if i told you hey guess what in jail in the mornings sometimes if you get in the right angle the sun comes through the, bar the bars and you can hear a bird sing and it is so wonderful you know or if i told you hey guess what in jail if you scrub enough toilets you can get two dollars a month so you can buy a chocolate bar and it's amazing like would that be telling you like oh my god i need to go to jail <laughs> like it sounds amazing like no i've had a lot of amazing privileges and just experiences people will never know of in life but like did i enjoy my life like no <laughs> you know these things kind of you know they kind of help me keep going for whatever point i i have no idea but this place is hell on earth there's a lot of demons they've been allowed to attack me you know all my life um i've tried like i've passively looking back tried to escape quote unquote escape this realm many times and been rescued many times the first of which was when i was four years old and i did not do it on purpose but looking back it's kind of weird you know i it's just it was just my personality um when i was two years old my mother would lock me you know up to two years old she would lock me in a room all day um so she could go to work and i figured out that um i could eventually climb out of that crib and then i started climbing stairs i started looking around i started planning things i was like okay when does she leave i can hear her leave i can get out you know and i could do things and i started learning reading at a young age and everything so i was like very much like a person who looked at the horizon saw something made a plan and like achieved it and when i was four years old you know i was in the shallow end of a pool and i remember looking and they were saying like don't leave this area and i was like thinking like why and i was like looking at people swimming and i'm like oh that's easy and i was like looking and like kind of weighing okay well i shouldn't leave the shallow end but how far can i go out you know and so yeah i would kind of peek and take a few more steps and peek and take a few more steps and like i don't know why in the mother f they do this but like the shallow end back then in coronation swimming pool at edmonton alberta canada where i drowned and was rescued by the lifeguard when i was four years old so this would have been in the news probably around 1986 i've tried to find archives try to find this i don't know where to look to get this stuff so so yes and the shallow end just like slopes into the deep end and when you start tiptoeing down it starts to pull you the gravity of the downhill starts to fucking pull you in the deep end and that's what started happening to me and i just remember it reached a point where i couldn't go back i remember yeah i, I remember drowning i remember dying like i already did it once you know why did why did that guy have to <sighs> imagine dying 
and having to come back to life to live your shitty life with your poverty and your abusive mother and your fucked up immune system and your lack of a father and your you know having to work in the slave system your entire life and never having a safe secure place to call home you know i have this nice place here and i can just never escape the people who fucking smoke or party or watch loud tv i am paying like I'm paying, like, my, when my friends found out how much I was paying for this, they're like, what? Like, they couldn't believe it. You know, by Mexico standards. <laughs> but, like, I still, I can't, no matter what the fuck I do, I can't escape from these demonic, these demonic people, these demons on earth. No matter what I do or where I go, they seek me out. This place is hell. And I never wanted to fucking be here. And I've had so many wonderful and beautiful moments, like I said. I could just daydream my entire life. And I've had so many, so many magical, beautiful things, but the horrible things have been innumerable as well, man. Humans are so disappointing and disgusting. Like, I just feel so gross thinking that the reason I'm here is because my stupid parents bumped their genitals together. And my mom crapped me out in a hospital room and then went for a cigarette outside with another abusive woman who she ended up being best friends with so they could abuse children together. I don't know if there is a god. I talk about god, but I don't mean, like... You know, like an actual god. I just mean like whatever energy is animating this whole world. And like I've had these weird spiritual and religious experiences. But I don't know. Um, but I don't know if they're actually real. You know, quote unquote God does not protect or help children. Quote unquote God does not, you know, grant any kind of peace to virtuous people you can buy peace with money and that goes to the evil people who are willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to get ahead so when I'm gone I just want the world to know that my life was incredibly painful and difficult. I'm glad I don't have to be here anymore. I'm super de duper glad I did not inflict this a life sentence on hell on earth on any other living being. I'm glad that my maternal lineage ends with me. I'm glad that my mother was put down and that my father will be put down soon. And um, yeah. All of this was not necessary. And, um, I'm going to keep trying my absolute best because what else am I going to do now that I'm stuck in hell? If I was in a jail cell, I would probably wallow and complain for a while and then I'd just start doing squats, push ups memorizing stuff, kind of like, you know, Damien Eccles, what he did to get out of jail. But yeah. What a curse. It wasn't a gift in the least. <sighs> 